In this video, we will discuss the importance of the line judge position and try to teach you what you need to know to be successful. As a line judge, you may think you're not the most important person out there on the court officiating. Everyone looks at the R1 as the person who is making all the calls, and they are, but they cannot do it without the line judges. The R1, the R2, and the two line judges are a team. You need to utilize your team to be successful as for any of those positions. Use each other, depend on each other, and when you're the line judge, if you're not giving your full attention to the game and assisting and helping your R1, your R1 is just going to be left hanging. You've got to help them and tell them what you see. There is a reason why there are four officials out there. This game is fast. The angles are very difficult to see. We need all of us helping out to try and figure out the right calls. Here are the main signals that we use as a line judge. Most of them you've all seen before. The in signal, out, the touch signal, when the ball goes outside the antenna or touches the antenna, which is basically the same signal as a service line fault, when the server steps on the line or over the line before the ball is contacted for serve. And then the I don't know signal, the impossible to judge. This is the signal that we try not to do as line judges. There are times that you have to. There are times where you get blocked out by another player that you have to turn and run away so you don't interfere with play, so you don't get knocked out, um, so you don't injure a player. There are times when you need to use it, but try not to use it. This means... Don't pull out your phone during the middle of play. Don't be watching the court next to you. Make sure you are focused on the game in front of you. Make sure you are helping your R1 and your R2 the very best you can. Okay, here's just a couple signal de demonstrations. Being a line judge is pretty easy, but there are a few things that you need to remember. For the end signal, hold that signal. You see how she held it there? Until she made con eye contact with the R1, they make that eye contact, she can relax again. As soon as the R1 sees you, makes that call, you can relax again. Here's the out signal. Nice high. It's not low. She doesn't have it by her head. It's nice up and high so that it will get the attention of the R1. You are saying that ball is 100% out. It went outside the line. The end signal is used when the ball lands inside the court or on the line. The out signal is anywhere outside the court. For VBA, we have a couple of modifications that we use. One of them is the ball out signal. Usually if there are benches, bleachers, low hanging basket, baskets, floor obstructions that are less than two meters from the court and it's interfering with the play of the ball, the ball is out and there can be a replay directed at the first referee's discretion. For safety of players in VBA, balls may not be pursued onto the bleachers, furniture, or other equipment. The ball will become out of play if the player comes into contact with any of those objects. So that's just one of the modifications that we do in VBA. Another one of those modifications will be the pursuit rule. So the pursuit rule, if the ball goes outside the antenna across the center line. It crosses the center line, goes onto the other side of the court, but it goes outside the antenna. A player is allowed to pursue it. They can go after the ball and bring the ball back to their court 
to then play the last play over. In VBA, we do have that modification where the, if the player is pursuing the ball, they may not travel under the net. They must travel around the net poles and the referee stand. Here is one of the other signals that is very common. It's not in, it's not out, it was touched. Notice where her arms are. Let's look at that one more time. Under her chin. And she keeps it there until the R1 recognizes it. Some just advice. Make sure you're in the correct position. As the line judge, you don't want to just stay in place. If you watch college or international line judges, they are moving around. They are getting to the best angle to see the ball. If you are looking outside in on the lines, you do not have the right positioning. You are skewed and it looks like that ball is in. But if you are looking inside out, if you are getting the best angle of where the ball is, you can see that the ball is actually outside the line. So you want to make sure you are in the best position. You want to move around. If that ball's coming at you, you want to move. <laughs> if the players are coming at you, make sure you're moving out of the way. Some key points to remember, talk with your R1 before the match. Make sure you're all on the same page. Make sure you know what they're looking for. You know what you need to be doing. Make sure you're not on your phone. Don't watch the other court. Pay close attention to what's going on on your court. You are responsible for your two lines, the sideline and the inline connecting where you are standing all the way down to the other side of the court. So you want to be responsible for all of those areas. Hold your flags or signals high until the R1 sees you. Like I mentioned multiple times, don't release your signal until you know the R1 sees you. The R1 can call you off if they saw something different, or they might not have even noticed you if you're sitting there saying the ball was down and the R1 thought the ball popped up off of their arm. You know, if you see it down, you hold that signal until somebody sees you. Hopefully these little tips and signals will help you to be a successful line judge.